In January, Corey I secured $150 million in funding led by FTV Capital with participation from NVIDIA and existing investors. So joining me now to talk about the AI revolution and how his company is working with businesses to put AI to work is the CEO of Core AI, Raj Konaru. Uh, Raj, welcome. Thank you. Uh, congratulations on the recent funding. From a public market perspective, doesn't get much bigger than NVIDIA, which does seem to be a pure play on artificial intelligence right now. How did this deal come together? Well, we've been uh, growing very rapidly over the last uh, few years. and. We've gotten to a stage where, you know, we need to scale significantly. You know, the product portfolio came together. So the deal was led by FTV Capital. NVIDIA was an existing investor who again participated in the deal, as did PNC Bank, Vistara Growth, and other investors. So the deal was mainly focused on how do we grow the business from where we're at to like 10, 10x, you know, that we believe we can get to over the next three to five years. And what does that growth look like? How will you be deploying this money? Well, we've been growing over 100% a year for the last several years and uh, in terms of our top line. And we expect to you know, continue to grow at a pretty fast rate over the next few years. The demand for AI platforms is through the roof. So most of the money is for working capital as we grow. Uh, we are heavy in product R&D, so we put out a new platform just a couple of weeks ago at our annual customer event called Gale for Gen AI for enterprises to use the models and be able to build fine-tuned models and also to build Gen AI apps without having to write code, essentially. So we're very enterprise AI focused. So being able to reach customers is where the money is going to go, mm -hmm. sales, marketing, R&D. So what exactly does your company offer in the artificial intelligence space? Over the last 10 years, you know, we built out a conversational AI platform to enable enterprises to put out chatbots and voice bots at large scale. You know, some of our customers automate over hundreds of millions of calls and chats that come in. More recently, we've added large language model support into the conversational AI platform to be able to enable creation of human-like you know, conversations. But now we've created a pure Gen AI platform to support use cases like summarization, content generation, that sort of thing. So we're a platform company. Mm -hmm. Enterprises use the platform to take advantage of the underlying innovation on the model layer mm -hmm. to be able to evolve their use cases mm -hmm. that give them the benefits that they're seeking. How much more efficient does the AI that you offer make a business and their models? The AI that we offer is in the form of a platform. So when a business says, hey, if I uh, implement this use case, I can get you know, hundreds of millions of dollars in benefits, the path to get there is where we come in. We provide the tools and the capabilities and take advantage of the current models that exist mm -hmm. at any point in time to make it easy and fast for the enterprise to achieve that objective, mm -hmm. basically. So the speed at which they can do it being able to handle complex use cases, you know, which are not easy to implement, is, is where the tooling and the platform comes into play. Do you think that the everyday American should be worried about AI? I don't think so. I mean, in my opinion, I'm an optimist, and I believe that AI, much like people were concerned about the internet when it came out, and people were concerned about mobile when it came out, AI is very fascinating technology. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to get better and better and better. And like the internet, it's going to permeate society. But what are the regulations that you might recommend, if you would, that we see Washington put in place to make sure that it is used for optimistic and good cases? Well, AI being applied in the consumer world for consumer use cases is different from the AI being applied in enterprises. Enterprises want to self-regulate with the technology using guardrails. You know, when they send something to a model, they want to apply a guardrail. When something comes out of a model, they want to apply a guardrail to manage toxicity, bias, things like that. I think that piece is very difficult to regulate in the consumer world. So I don't know if regulation is the way to go. I think, you know, consumer companies being able to apply guardrails to things that they deploy and self-regulate is a better way of 
actually doing it because at the end of the day, the consumers are going to vote on what a social media company puts out or somebody else puts out. So if they self-regulate, they're going to get more usage of their AI than otherwise. So I don't believe that any government regulation is going to be effective in the long run. I'm curious to learn more about NVIDIA's investment in you in this recent $100 million plus round. Is there a strategic element to that insofar that you'll be working with NVIDIA in a strategic partnership sort of fashion? So NVIDIA, we all know, is obviously the leader in AI chips. But what is less known is they also create a lot of models and they also create software products which run on their chips. So they've been going up the stack, you know, over a period of time. And we are at the application layer of that stack. So we use their models, you know, for speech recognition, text to speech, which then run on their chips, which basically completes the entire stack. So the partnership is to be able to take the innovations that they're doing and bringing them to enterprises with our platforms using their models and tools mm -hmm. to make an effective use case for an enterprise. What are the goals for your company this year? Well, we're going to try to grow as fast as we can. There's tremendous demand. Our pipeline is like five times bigger than same time last year. And uh, it's all about, you know, getting these platforms into play with these enterprises and, and enabling them to get the benefits of it. So we expect to continue to grow at a very fast pace over the next five years. What are some of the enterprises, the largest enterprises that you work with now or the enterprises that make up the majority of your revenues? Financial services, banks, insurance, wealth management is about a third of our business. So the number four bank in the US is one of our largest customers. The number one wealth management company in the country, I can't name them because of confidentiality clauses that we have, but these are household names. You know, they're, they're the kinds of customers we have. Large health institutions, both providers and payers, and life sciences companies like, like a Pfizer and a Johnson & Johnson and people like that, as well as large uh, payers like insurance companies uh, make up about 25% of our business. And large communication companies and media companies are also large customers of ours. Uh, cable companies, you know, one of the largest e-commerce players on the planet uses us for automating all customer service. Interesting. Uh, now I see here for our viewers who might not be familiar uh, with the offerings of your company, since it is private, that last week you announced a new EXO platform that does put, put AI to work, I'm reading here, 10 times faster. Is that the case? What can you tell me? Yes. I mean, so EXO has been the platform that we started the company with. Uh, we put out a new version. So with LLM integrations into the EXO platform, the time it takes to create an experience and the time, the the kind of experience that you create, both are affected, you know, in a much bigger way with the LLMs today. So the deep integration that we have done of the LLMs into the process, into the sausage making, and then when the sausage comes out, how it behaves, you know, when a consumer uses it, both have been improved significantly. All right, uh, Raj Konaru. Uh, we cover AI so much, and we're so happy that you could join us here at the Stock Exchange. He's the CEO of Core AI. Thank you.